Welcome to IdeaGen TV live from the NASDAQ here in Manhattan. I am honored to have with me here today, Sarah Walters, Executive Director of HOSA Future Health Professionals. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me. So great to have you with us. I'd like to start by asking you a very simple question. What is the mission of HOSA? Well, at HOSA, we work to empower future health professionals to be leaders in the global health community. And we do that through education, collaboration, and experience. So you cut it down to a science. I mean, <laughs> that was like a simple, succinct mission statement. And so as a HOSA alum, it was recent that you were wearing a patch, your blazer, and you were walking around the halls of Congress the White House and other places talking about the importance of this pipeline of future healthcare, healthcare professionals. What has been your journey and what is the impact that you're seeing from this pipeline? Well, first off, thank you for saying that it was not long ago that I it was, was not long ago. a HOSA patch uh, while I was a member <laughs> of HOSA. Now coming back and serving as the executive director, my journey was coming from a very rural background. I grew up in a town of about 1,400 people in our county, very small high school. And that's one of the things that I love about HOSA is that it's not exclusive to an urban, suburban, or rural environment. It really has equal access for mm -hmm. students who are involved in current technical education, health science, biomedical programs. And that's where I learned a lot of the skills to successfully transition into clinical practice. And not only did I learn those technical career-based skills that I needed to be successful, but I learned the importance of teamwork how to be a leader, and how to pull that into a career that really needs to be focused on multidisciplinary care and multi-institutional opportunities where we can connect together and change the level of healthcare. Incredible. And so let's talk a little bit about the skills. What kinds of skills does HOSA provide to its members, these 270,000 students across the nation and across the world? Yes. So that's what we were excited to hit that 270,000 number and continue to grow. But we really focus on being an enhancement to the classroom through what we call the HOSA model. And it really relates back to that education collaboration experience that we have within our mission. Everything that we do relates back to that mission and our core values. So we look at how do we enhance the classroom? How do we enhance the chapter or those team-based opportunities that students have? And then we do that through conferences. So students yeah. have time to network and come together and build community. And by the way, all of these things increase school connectedness, which are positive protective factors for our youth in the mental health state that they have and how they feel connected and can be successful in school. It helps them explore their careers and then helps them be a global citizen. They're able to connect not only with students here in the U.S., but through our international membership through conferences and networking opportunities. And I think what you're saying is also the, the, the organization is the only organization pre post secondary that is all healthcare. Correct. Which is a distinguishing factor. In addition to the fact that it's in school, it's part of the in school health science curriculum, not an after school club or, or something that's external to the school Absolutely. and to the curriculum. We're, we're intracurricular in that we're an enhancement to the health science education curriculum that's taught in the classroom. Every healthcare practitioner needs to know how to be a part of a team, needs to work with other specialties well, needs to be able to articulate their findings, whether that be data, clinical findings, or sometimes difficult news to deliver yeah. in order to be active members in their community and the health system. Incredible. And so you're working on, you know, so many different issues. I know mental health is one that your students in the pipeline are keenly aware of, and maybe some are, are dealing with some of those issues themselves. And so um, you recently brought on uh, Raul Andrews Jr. as one of the HOSA 100 yeah. uh, international advisors, right? Correct. Mentalhealthcareworks.org is, is the mission. I yeah. think you all will be helping in some way. We are very excited to be talking about how to integrate the Notice Talk Act curriculum for our educators, advisors, having that positive mentor support in the classroom, and then also increasing the skills of our students through resources with the APA Foundation to be good peer supporters that we have. We have several competitive events and then other recognition opportunities through partnerships like SAMHSA, uh, the Wellbeing Challenge, yeah. where students are learning about their own mental health and what are some healthy ways that they can be better 
to themselves and to their communities. And so one of the things, you know, these interactive op opportunities, I think you just alluded to that. So mm -hmm. what are some of the types of interactive opportunities that these students can have, can gain by being part of the HOSA pipeline? It's a great question. So we have 92 health related competitive events that work on healthcare competencies and they're industry vetted. So we use our industry partners like the APA Foundation to look through skills that we're teaching. How do we enhance that in the classroom, whether that is a technical clinical skill or honing in on your leadership skills or being a better service provider within the community and getting recognition. But it's all about bringing industry into the classroom and having an approachable way that students can learn and explore different career opportunities within healthcare. And you know, that's a cross sector thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're a nonprofit organization, you're bringing in companies or other NGOs or the public sector to connect the dots. And so I think that is extremely, extremely powerful. What is the next step in terms of expanding HOSA's impact? What do you see on the horizon? You're the executive director. You're helping with the student leadership, set the tone and the North Star for the organization. What does that look like for you, Sarah? Sure. I really think it's a four-prong approach. So we have to look at what industry we have and what industries we need to bring to the table to give the best opportunities for our current students that are there. We need to look at our current model, where we are in the pre-secondary space, middle school space, um, and some in the post-secondary collegiate space, and saying, well, there are some chapters that are great at the classroom part, but not so great at involving all of the students and giving them all equal opportunity. Sure. So how do we raise that equal opportunity to get those members involved? And then also following industry trends that career development is starting earlier and earlier. So getting down into our middle school sectors. And then on the latter end, it's really saying, OK, we have them on the pathway how are we managing our exit points? So once they're in that pipeline, what can we do to remove barriers? And then what can we do to keep them on the road to success to be from a future health professional to a successful health professional? And what I heard you say, you mentioned trends. I mean, you need to stay on the finger of the pulse of, of, of the future. Mm -hmm. You need to know that, for example, if you're a coder, you know, you're no longer coding because generative AI is coding for you. So you don't need that skill anymore. That skill is now obsolete, sadly, or, or not. And so same thing with professions. Sometimes you need to be looking at what is the future looking like? And the future may be very soon. Right. How are you gaining that industry perspective in terms of the changes, the rapid changes that we've heard about from so many people that are coming at us? How is the organization staying ahead of the curve? And just like healthcare, we're constantly evolving. And that's what's critical about the industry partnerships that we have and staying with those conversations. And then not only our industry partners in the health sector, but our partners within the education sector and say, mm -hmm. what are the new trends in education? How are students learning? How yeah. do students want to accept new experiences? How can we pull them to have different collaborative ventures that still pull them back into the healthcare space, both in the clinical and the non-clinical sector. And that's what's really cool, you just said it. And that's what we stand for here at IdeaGen is cross-sector. So you're talking about you staying close to your industry partners, wherever they may be mm -hmm. in whatever industry you're working with in the healthcare sector. And then you're also talking about education because this is all about lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. And you're beginning in middle school, high school, you're taking them into college with chapters, you're global. There's different country nuances. If you're in South Korea and you're a host student, maybe a little bit different than your Canadian chapters, right? right. So, so there's there's those nuances. But in the end, it's all the same. And you have to stay ahead of these, these curves, especially on the innovation side. Sarah, what is a, an example of a success story that you're, you can share? I know there's literally millions. Mm -hmm. What is a success story you can share with the millions of people that will watch you on this interview today? So success is found to me anytime I get to interact with our students. So I think about the innovation piece that you talk about. And we have lots of different alumni stories that we could speak to. But I think of 
what's currently happening. And I came from a clinical background of pediatric otolaryngology. I happened to be on an elevator with a set of students that competed in our medical innovation competition that we have, where they're showcasing their skills and ideas. And I saw some things that looked familiar. So I started asking some questions because I love to learn and find out what we're doing. And they showed me a prototype of a nasal endoscopy to do direct delivery medication to the base of the eustachian tube to treat eustachian tube dysfunction. These were our high school students <laughs> working on innovative devices that really are changing healthcare. And that's so exciting to me to see it in real time, what's happening in the classroom, knowing that they're gonna go on and do great and amazing things. Incredible. Sarah Walters, Executive Director, host of Future Health Professionals. What is your call to action for our global audience today? My call to action is to get within your communities. We want expanded industry partners, but we also want great experiences at the local level, at the state level, and at the international level. So get connected to your schools and find out how to work within industry to increase that connection because it's going to take all of us to help address the future healthcare workforce and the needs within our communities. And how can folks find out more about HOSA? Yeah. So you can go to our website, hosa.org, that's H-O-S-A, Dot org, and we look forward to hopefully continuing to change the future of the workforce. Sarah Walters, Executive Director, host of Future Health Professionals Changing the World here at the NASDAQ Live in Manhattan. Thank you.